Hello, howdy, and good morning, fishing freaks. Welcome on back to the channel. Glad you subscribed. Glad you're here today, hanging out with me on a fishing vlog, a kind of a special one, because we're gonna be looking at one of my very first fishing rods, taking it out and seeing if it still can catch fish. So I just cleaned up the silver bullet, it is looking extra juicy, got all the water spots off of it, it's wax and everything, coming off of Guggen Week, you know, white claw cans everywhere, dirt and everything so just cleaned it up it is really hard not to take out a good looking clean boat and i was digging around looking for some camping gear and whatnot and i came across in the closet one of my very first this might actually be the very first fishing rod i ever had so i want to talk about this for a minute so what makes this rod special is when when i was growing up as a kid my dad used to take me fishing in his brown terry bass boat i still remember that boat he got me this pole it's a telescoping uh, pole and it's, it's really designed to catch brim and crappie and uh and all that but he would bass fish in the front of the boat and you know as a kid you're like casting around you're, you're getting in your dad's way your mom's way or whatever when you're out there uh on the water a lot of times i'm sure i'm going to encounter that with him you know lures flying at you or whatever so this kind of pole, a telescoping pole, there's no reel on it. There's no casting per se. It's just kind of a placement, you know, fish around trees or fish around docks or just fish open water, up in creeks or whatever. We didn't have a huge bass boat, so we used to fish a lot of small waters. He would go and get me. We'd go to the gas station and we would get uh, little mealworms, like little grub worms uh, that come in those little containers like live worms do like little yellow little grubs and I would get those I would put them on a little bitty hook sometimes I'd have a bobber whatever he, he rigged me up so it was very entertaining for me and, it, and of course you know it just goes along I can still like smell the old two cycle uh, engine the gasoline the oil burning in the morning just a lot of memories associated with this rod so it's definitely something I'm gonna you know hanging up hanging up in the in the tree house or the the cabin one of these days and just talk about it so i thought while it's summertime why not break out the old brim pole my original brim pole and see if we can uh rig it up and catch some fish the old-fashioned way uh, how i used to catch them out of the back of the boat with my dad let's get to it but first of all we got to feed the chickens they've been squawking at me they're pretty hungry letting you guys in on a little summer routine here at the tree house i usually come out here early mornings while it's still kind of cool water the yard, I feed the chickens, and I've been giving them uh, some water as well, like a big water tub, because some of them like to cool off in it, like they hang out. Easy girls, easy. So the food is right here. Guess what? Food's right here. Yeah, the old girls know, the old hens know. These are the ones I really want to get the nutrition anyways, because they're the ones laying eggs. So we actually have some leftover salmon in here. Uh, we've got a bunch of spinach. Spinach has got a lot of good nutrients for chickens. And then uh, we give them leftovers, literally. Just we've got some of Emmy's leftover fruits and vegetables. I think there's uh, some little crab cakes in there. Y'all wanna get you some? Y'all wanna get you some of these treats? Oh yeah, a little Easter egg or nose. That's where the goods are. Also, for those of you that are subscribed to the Lake Life Family Channel, if you're not, it's linked down below. But thank you uh, for commenting and letting us know what these little fruits are. These are actually Mexican plums. So we have these growing in the backyard and they are edible, actually. And I did a little research. You can, uh, a lot of people make jams and stuff out of them. They're kind of a, a sweet and sour. Just take a bite out of this one right here. Mexican plum. Trees, they trees have like a really aggressive kind of gnarly bark on them. Just look like that. Got like a waxy exterior. And then once you uh, break that skin, I mean, it tastes like a plum. It's a plum. Just got a little bit of, a little bit of tartness to it. And there's a seed in the middle, so you wanna make sure you don't eat that seed. But, hey girls, got some plums here. Got some plums here for you. Get back in here, we gotta go fishing. I 
just gotta tell y'all, I am not getting tired of hearing that motor start up. Uh, I kind of get a little grin every time I hear it because it's like getting into an old sports car or something, or a new sports car, just, just gnarly, I love it. I would consider ourselves lucky today because all the way over here we had some overcast coming in, actually a few little uh, sprinkles that have uh, moved in. It's really windy and usually this time of day, white bass for schooling. So right here, it's really choppy. I'm gonna try to find a calm spot and see if we can see some on top and uh, well, get the old fishing pole a workout. Okay, also we have located a lot of fish. They're below the surface. They're not really coming up at this moment. I'm hoping that they do. We'll show you how this this rod works. So the line ties around these uh, these two little little uh, pegs right here. These little brass deals. You just wrap your line up on there, and you don't want to have more line than the rod's length because that makes it really difficult uh, to fish. But I've got a, just a little loop knot around here at the end. I've got some 10 pound tests fluorocarbon on here and this just extends out There's one piece oh yeah now they're all connected extends out into 10 feet so wah bam this time of year they're normally feeding on small small bait fish I'm gonna rig up this the spoon right here I'm gonna be able to get it down a little deeper and I can swim it at the surface I can just kind of drag it along figure eight it and hopefully we can get on them Got some located. We're starting to come up to the top here. But I'm gonna need them to just go ahead and get real excited for me to catch them on this little cane pole. See them going there, I just can't get them. Can't get to them. Oh, got one, got one, got one, got one. Yeah, baby, yeah, baby. Look at this. First fish on the old school pole. That's pretty cool right there, y'all. Little guy. <laughs> it's about the size that this rod is meant for. No reel needed. You just fling it on out there. Oh boy, that technique looks bad. Oh, there's a bunch of little ones right under me. You can see them. I'm just gonna figure eight it right here. Come on now. You've had a taste for it. Oh, got him, go, no. <laughs> There's like hardly any hook set to this thing. Oh, got him. Yeah, baby. <laughs> There's two fish on the pole. Still doing it. Still doing it. White bass. <sighs> these are little ones, but these are like perfect size for right now. Just get a little warm up. Oh, gosh. That was a big one that was chasing it right there. Got him, got him. There we go. What we got? Yeah! Got gotcha, you, boy. <laughs> oh my gosh. That's fun. The rod just leans over. I wanna talk about bringing back some memories. I think I'm gonna try another spot. Let's see if I can get on some, some more fish. Like the water should just be erupting right now. I wanna see the eruptions. Oh, got him. Yeah! Come here, buddy! Got you! That is number four. Well, oh, there must be a lot of shad moving through here. I would fully expect them to just go bonkers on some shad up at the top, but those shad are like on the bottom. So is anybody here familiar with this fishing pattern? that I'm about to mention, it's, um, it's called the scatter pattern. And basically what happens is you've got these fish located, dialed, and then all of a sudden they scatter, they scatter. Is anybody familiar with that? Am I the only one? Raise your hand in the comments, let me know. What has happened is the shad, which I thought with this overcast would be 
staying up top because they're low light feeders feed on plankton but they seem to be moving out deep in these these white bass are just kind of following they're they're scattered you can see some here that are falling the shad suspended and then there's some fish here on the bottom i'm not really sure what they are but you can see on both sides here like the shad have just decided to move on and be in weird positions that i would not predict but what is happening is the sun is starting to come out so things are changing i was anticipating massive schools on top just going crazy and it was going to be easy for me to take my pole and just dangle them like this literally i was just waiting on them ran around a bunch just looking for those scenarios i haven't even seen the birds really lying in the banks with with shad up shallow that's this is normally like a pretty typical summer pattern but you know the fish don't always read the rule books and i certainly didn't write the rule books I don't know. They just said, man, sorry about it. We're going to go hang out in the deeps, get all suspended like, so you can't locate us on your little fancy electronics. I can. I can. I will let you know, fish. I just, it's really hard to get a lure down in your face and keep it there, especially if there's only like a couple of you. I want you all grouped up. I want you ganged up, ready to munch. But I digress. But what I also want to do is try to catch uh, some gills and then try to catch a bass. Any kind of bass on this rod is going to be ridiculous. It'll, it'll, be, it'll be funny uh, if I can even get the fish in. Hooked up on the bass. Hooked up on the bass. Got a good old bass around the tire. Well, I hooked him good. Something I really like about the uh, those Mustad triple grips on our Guggen, Guggen Squad hard baits. Stick them good. Especially in the summertime when their mouths are flimsy. For our next attempt, we're going to take ourselves a wide gap finesse hook. I'm going to take a, a five inch drag and drop. This is something new. This right here has a really good shad profile. You got a pearl belly. You got that green pumpkin back. So it looks like a shad that's dying. And there's a lot of shad that hang around marinas right now. Different types of dock structures and whatnot. So this actually is not a bad technique for right now. It's just going to be the delivery the delivery system to get it there. A 10 foot cane pole with really no hook set. If if one grabs this thing, I'm gonna, it's gonna be hard to tell first of all, because when you pull up on this rod to check if a fish is there, you really have no, let. like once you try to pull up on them and they feel it, they're gonna let go. You're not gonna be able to fastly, quickly uh, drop back down and, and bring it back up. Woo, windy, windy. My goodness, I'm really just letting the lure do all the work. So I'm moving the boat, I'm casting or placing the lure just ahead of me and then letting the line sink. And by the time it's about parallel with me, I'll just lift it up and go to the next thing. And I can cover this area pretty good doing this. Just gotta pay attention to the line, it starts moving. guys oh my gosh <laughs> I got a freaking bass yes oh I stuck him good look at that that was a two-handed magnum hook set there holy cow any bigger than that that would have been quite the fight boy you just swam out the exact way you needed to Oh, clean you up little buddy thank you for bringing back some old childhood memories that was fun Bing. that was cool i was actually able to get a hook set on it and uh and it swam out perfect way it swam to the other side of the boat actually i am going to rig up another one of those and just see if i can get maybe one a little bit bigger but uh checked it off the list why bam I honestly don't even know my biggest bass on that rod. It's probably about that size. That, that could have been, quite honestly. Oh my God. Oh, 
That was a good one. That was a good one. I didn't get a hook set in him. He was just running with it. Dad gum. Oh, got him. Oh, got him. Oh, oh my God. Oh, 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 oh. He was taking off with it. I wasn't paying attention. The wind is really kicking up now. It's blowing these clouds out of here. We're about to receive the full wrath of the Texas heat. So I was able to get one bass. I had another one on. I don't know how big it was. I mean, it, it felt tasty now i'm gonna fish it the way i remember the most which is with a cork or a bobber an indicator you know depending on wherever you are whatever you call it that's what i called it when i was a kid so i'm gonna take a bobber like this i'm gonna find the smallest hook in my boat if i can scrap up a fly that would be phenomenal but i'm gonna try to find the smallest hook that i have and put it on here and see if we can get some uh, some gills or some sunfishes. And that's the way I used to fish this rod when I was sitting in the back of my, my dad's boat. Toss it out there up under a tree or whatever it is, watch the bobber go down, pull back on them, sling them in the boat, have a smile, maybe have a snack, maybe a, you know, a little combo or a, a starburst or a Skittles, just whatever kind of snack dad got you from the, the Zippy Mart. And wah bam, childhood memories made. LFD, shout out to you. That's my dad, by the way for introducing me into fishing. Well, she's a little breezy in here. I'm gonna give her a whirl. Ooh, did take it. Must be small. Another one. Got it. Got it. That's what I'm talking about. There is your American Standard. Bluegill. Pork chop of the lake. Oh my gosh, there's another one on it. Another one on it. They, they're coming out of the woodworks for this thing. Oh my goodness. Well, one attacked the bobber and the other one attacked the fly. That is beautiful. My goodness. Look how pretty this fish is. I mean, that looks like a tropical reef fish. That's awesome. See you, buddy. You're aggressive. I like you. Yeah! Oh, man. So we've got a bluegill, and I believe this is a... Oh! I am forgetting my, my biology. Apologize. There's a bunch of them back here, and they're purdy. Got him. Well, I'm cleaning these suckers up in here with this pole. Tiny, tiny, but fun. Take you a gander at that beautiful creation right there. See ya. I've learned. Operation Seek and Destroy Bluegill. It's gonna happen. It's gonna happen. I can, I can see this guy. Just not quite what he wants. I've made up my mind, fishing freaks. I'm gonna come back and destroy these gills. It's getting about time for summer. Bluegill catch and cook. Look at that. Rod just disappeared back in my tube. And what you want to do, you just take your line, you wrap it right here, and you are good to go. There used to be a rubber piece that went on the top, but I lost it over the years. Even got a little blood on my rod right there from that bass. Successful. Alrighty, fishing freaks, we're gonna sign it off for today. I was able to break out my old dusty childhood pole and get a variety of different species on it. And uh, you know, it's kind of cool. I'm thinking about taking it on uh, this little bluegill mission with me. So that's what I'm gonna do next. I've got uh, a way to cook these bluegill that I wanna try. Go ahead and smash that like button for resurrecting a rod from the past and bringing back some old memories. Maybe you've got something in your closet or in your garage that needs a little dusting off. Just break it out. See what the old fishing technology used to be like. It'll make you appreciate the new stuff we've got now. Until the next fishing adventure, I'm wishing you the best in all of your dangles. God bless you. We'll see you soon.